good morning. Wouldn't you like to be in a place to always know what to say and how to say it? I'm going to show you today that as women, that is a possibility. My talk today is about the power of three in advocacy. That's the ability just to say what you want and say it when you mean it. We all know who this is. He's the greatest man who ever wrote the spoken word. Shakespeare. He made his actors sound like gods. How are you going to achieve that? Listen. If music be the food of love, play on. To be or not to be, that is the question. Anybody got the idea of how he did it? In a sentence, he used two stresses five times to make ten. His magic number was ten. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? We haven't got time for this, I'm afraid. We need <laughs> to make sure that we can feminize Shakespeare so that we become commanders of our own voices. I was instructed by a lady, we'll call her Sandra, to assist her, assist her company, to assist the younger female executives in her company, and also to assert her own personal, powerful advocacy she felt she needed. I'm going to reveal to you a technique that many politicians, trust me, they've instructed me, orators and advocates use. And as an English barrister, we're trained in how to put forward our cases. What is this? I asked Sandra. I don't know. It's a storm. There's lightning. Sandra, you have to learn to describe what you see. Listen, it's a cold, dark, stormy night. There's your power of three there. Cold, dark, stormy. Try this. Put the rule of three in a sentence. Oh, I don't know, Sophia. It's a glass of water. Not quite. Describe what you see. It's a cool glass of water. The sky, bright blue sky. Is the grass green and spiky? Not quite. If you want to emphasize something, you can repeat the word. Like Tom Jones did. We all know the song. Well, the more elderly in the room do. Green, green grass. Get into the habit of repeating words that are important and have resonance. Rule of three to define. Now, Sandra worked with her boss, and his name was called Daniel. Daniel was the bane of Sandy's life. He was actually the CEO. She was the COO. But I know many of you may have line managers, bosses, who are difficult, like Daniel. So he would just call her in to his office at a whim. Sandra, come into my office. I needed to give her a line, a phrase, powerful advocacy where she could define the parameters of their social interaction at work. The next time it happened, yes, Daniel, is that for a chat? Is that for a discussion? Or is it a formal meeting? So, he had to decide. So we use this term of escalating. Thereafter, she could de-escalate. Sandra, come into my office. Oh, yes, Daniel. Is that a formal meeting? 
Is that a discussion or just a little chat? So you can develop your advocacy for your own being and your own strength at home, at work, in a meeting. Next one. We all know what this is. The Goldilocks. The Goldilocks tale. So you can use this idea to set your paragraphs in advocacy. Sandra, what about the figures? Well, Daniel, at first sight, they're not too great. Close analysis, they're not that bad. In fact, I think deeper evidence would suggest we're bang on point. So Sandra grew in her ability through advocacy to put her position forward. I was also helping the junior managers, the junior female executives in the company that week. And many of them came up to me and said, Sophia, we know you're a barrister. We really would like to know how to put forward a good argument. Any ideas? That's what an argument looks like, by the way. Lots of different personalities, lots of different opinions, all at the same time. This is Sandra. We all know who she is, don't you? She's Sandra D. She thought this is how she dealt with an argument. So when Danny said, Sandra, what's going on? She would demurely sit there and say, well, Danny. And then she would try putting on her Sandra D tight trousers and having a go herself in a rebuttal. It didn't work. Because what she didn't do, and what she failed to do, was this. Every argument needs to be closed down. Every debate needs to have its door firmly shut. So each time there is an argument, you must remember the devices to put that argument to bed under your heels and have your Danny on the floor. <laughs> so when you have the first line of an argument, you hear it. Yes, John, although it appears, sorry, John, yes, although it appears last year's results were a disappointment, they were unexpected, they were mediocre, you then have to give your analysis and your opinion. That's when you put on your Sandra D tight black jeans, you get your hair done, and you give your analysis and your opinion. That's what you are paid for, ladies. That is your job. Whether you're a junior executive or you're moving further up the ranks. And then what most women forget is that you give your judgment. You close down the debate. The evidence is in the figures for my departments, however, not yours. So this is how you deal with the power of three in advocacy for an argument. There's never a black or a white. There is never a right or a wrong. In fact, the middle ground, you have to adjudicate, you have to analyze, you have to appreciate the other person's argument. So in short, you've learned how to escalate and de-escalate to ensure that you have powerful advocacy. So you set up that arena for you to put your position forward. You have learnt the Goldilocks method, to look at the extremes before you and to come down the middle and to recognise that. And finally, you know how to put the power of three in advocacy together to form an argument. You look at one way, you look at the other, but you always must 
get your shiny red heels on and close down the debate. Now, I get a call from Sandra right at the last minute of the week. Sophia, Danny has been removed by the board. I am the new CEO. I've got to give a presentation for the board in 10 minutes. I know about the escalation technique. I know how to group together. I know the Goldilocks technique. I know if I'm interrupted, how to respond. What do I do? How do I say it? So after 10 minutes, I calm her down. And I remind her, in order to give powerful, persuasive advocacy, the fluidity of speech, the ability to command any room, you must remember the power of three. This is what she said. Board, I'm here before you today. Last year, it was difficult. It was challenging. It was a hard situation for our company. This year, we've had a cold, dark, stormy night. Next year, under my stewardship, there will be a refreshing change. There will be bright blue sky. There will be green, green grass. What she used was the strongest memory of the power of three that I want to leave with you here today. The strongest power of three, what Sandra used, was time. If you're ever stuck about putting your case forward, advocating for yourself and your abilities, making sure your company is aware of what you're doing. You use time. She used last year, this year, and next year to remind herself, to jolt her, because we're humans. We live in the ever-present. We remember our past, and we hope for the future. It is the most powerful word you ever need to know for advocacy. It was, it is, and it will be. Thank you.